Okay, so this is the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths Paper 1, 2022, question 10. A student is asked to memorize a long list of digits and then write down the list sometime later. The proportion P of the digits recalled correctly after T hours can be modeled by this function here, 0.82 minus 0.12 log T plus 1. T is between 0 and 12 hours and T is real. Find the proportion of digits recalled correctly after three hours according to the model. Give your answer correct to two decimal places. Okay, so our formula is P of T is equal to 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 log T plus 1. So we've got to do P of three hours. So it's just 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 log T log of uh, 3 plus 1. So again, that's just calculator work. All you've got to do is stick that into your calculator. We've got to do it to two decimal places. So it's 0 0.65. So they can recall 65% of the uh, words that they memorized initially. Okay, so let's have a look at part B. After how many hours would exactly 55% of the digits be recalled correctly according to this model? Give your answer to two decimal places. So again, this is just working out T, working backwards kind of thing. So write down the original formula. So it's P of T is equal to 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 uh, log T plus 1. So we're told that 55% of the digits, so we've got to convert that to decimals here. So 0 0.55 is equal to 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 log of t plus 1. Okay, so let's just work through this. So first thing, bring over the uh, 0.82, so that'll give you minus 0 0.27 is equal to minus 0 0.12 log of t plus 1. Uh, divide across by 0.12, that'll give you 2.25, uh, 2 and that is equal to log of t plus 1. Now, next thing you've got to do is convert this. This is in log form, so you've got to convert it to index form. So in other words, there's an e down here to so the base e. So this would be e to the power of 2.25 is equal to t plus 1. So that will give you e to the power of 2.25 minus 1 is equal to t. And we've got to work that out on our calculators to two decimal places. So to two decimal places, that's 8.49. And that's it. That's two, two decimal places. Okay, next one. We have to find the value of p prime 1, so we've just got to differentiate. So our original function again is p of t is equal to 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 log t plus 1. So we want p prime t. So we've got to differentiate. Differentiate this, you get zero. Now differentiate this thing here. This is a log function. So the log function then is just going to be, we write down to 0 0.12, the log of anything is just going to be 1 over the t plus 1. Then you've got to differentiate this. So if you, if you differentiate t, you'll just get 1. So really we're just multiplying by 1 again. Okay, so it doesn't really change it. Our answer then is 0 point, minus 0 0.12 over t plus 1. This is our p dash t, our differentiated function. Okay, now, oh yeah, sorry, we've got to put in the 1 then. We've got to do, we've got to do p prime 1. So all we've got to do is put in 0, minus 0 0.12 here and put in the 1 here, so 1 and 1, 2. So our answer then finally is just going to be minus 0 0.06. So this tells us the proportion of digits recalled after t hours in this particular case, t hours in this particular case, uh, is, is decreasing. And in after one hour, it's decreasing at a rate of uh, 0 0.06. 
So let's have a look at the next question. So P dash T, P prime T is always negative between 0 and 12 hours. What does this tell you about the proportion of digits recalled correctly after T hours? So it tells us that the proportion of digits after T hours is decreasing. So in other words, as, as time goes on, fewer, not words, digits, So it tells us that as time goes on, fewer digits are being recalled. Use calculus to show that the graph of y is equal to p of t has no points of inflection for t between 0 and 12. So remember, to find a point of inflection, you've got to differentiate twice. So our original function, again, was p of t is equal to 0 0.82 minus 0 0.12 log t plus 1 and we differentiated this uh, once anyway at least so far and we got minus 0 0.12 over uh, t plus 1. I'll leave those out. So what we've got to do now is just simply differentiate again. So if we take um, p double prime t is equal to. Now I'm just going to rewrite this so I'm going to rewrite that as minus 0 0.12 times t plus 1 to the power of minus 1. It just makes it easier to understand what I'm doing when I'm differentiating it. So I'm going to use the chain rule here. I'm going to take this here, bring it down here and multiply and then reduce this power by 1. So minus minus is plus so I'll get 0 0.12 times t plus 1 to the power of minus 2. Reduce the power by 1. Now differentiate what's in here and you're simply multiplying by, I'm going to multiply by 1 so that's not going to make any difference. I'll just leave that out. So what I'll get when I differentiate a second time is 0 0.12 divided by t plus 1 squared. Now if you look at this, this is the second uh, derivative of our original function. So to find the point of inflection, what you would normally do is take your second derivative, which is 0 0.12 over t plus 1 squared, let that equal to 0. Now if you look at this, the, the, it's not possible for this to be equal to 0. The only way you can have a fraction equal to 0 is if the numerator is equal to 0. You can't have a 0 on the bottom of a fraction, the denominator can't be 0 because you can't divide by 0. So the uh, numerator is not equal to zero, so therefore this is not possible. Since 0 0.12 is not equal to zero, therefore there is no point of inflection. I think that's all we had to do. Uh, let me just see. Use calculus to show that the graph y is equal to p of t has no points of inflection. Okay, so that's what we've done. We've differentiated twice and shown that it's not possible for that to be equal to zero. That's just simply not possible there. Okay, so let's look at this part here then, part E1. If we learn a skill and then don't practice it, how well we can do it usually decreases over time. For example, if you learn to play the guitar, then don't play the guitar for a number of months. You would probably not be as good at playing the guitar the first time uh, you try it again. This effect can be modeled by the following function, or following equation. A is equal to B times T plus 1 to the power of C. A is a measure of how well the skill can be done at a certain time. T is equal to 0, so at the beginning. B is a measure of how well the skill can be done T months later without practicing. C is a constant. A, B, C, and T are all real. Write C in terms of log A, log B, and log uh, T plus 1. Okay, so let's start with our function here. So we've got A 
is equal to b times t plus 1 to the power of c. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide by b, so that's a over b is equal to t plus 1 to the power of c. Next thing I'm going to do is just get the log to the base 10 of both sides because that's what we're asked for up here. So if you get the log of the left hand side, it's the log of a fraction. So using one of the laws of logs, you can do this kind of thing here. The log of a divided by b is equal to the log of a minus the log of b. On the right hand side then we've got log uh, t plus 1 to the power of c. You can bring the c down so we get log a minus log b is equal to c log t plus 1 and then finally to find c here we just divide across so it's log a minus log b divided by log t plus 1 and that's it uh, we don't have to do any more with that it says write c in terms of log a log b and log t plus 1 all to the base 10 by the way I should have written in base 10s here all the way down uh, log 10. Okay so that's it for E1 let's have a look at E2 then. A student got 80% on a guitar exam after two years of not playing the guitar and years is in bold there which is probably important yeah because t is in months so we need to be careful a little bit there the student got 47 percent on the same exam use this to find the value of c in the model above correct to three decimal places so our formula for c we've got to work out c so our formula for c was log a to the base 10 minus log b to the base 10 divided by log the base 10 of t plus 1. Now I just double check that before I launch into this. So it's log a minus log b over log t plus 1. Okay, so let's work this out. So a is 80%, that's at the beginning. So we're going to look at the log of 0 0.80, again to the base 10, minus log b. So that's uh, later on, so that's going to be 0 0.47 to the base 10. And then we've got to divide by log of t plus 1. Now t is two years, but it's t is in months, so it's going to be 24 plus 1. All of that is just calculator work. And when you do that, you've got to do this three decimal places. So the constant then is going to be 0 0.47. 165 and that's to three decimal places. Okay, and that's it for this particular question and indeed paper one.